What if I told you the scariest thing that might be holding you back is not your solo queue teammates, although they're obviously pretty bad too. What if the number one thing holding you back was actually your own mistakes? And wait, before you start coping in the comment section, I'm not blaming you here. I'm not even talking about the mistakes we know we're making. I'm saying the scariest thing is actually the mistakes you don't even see. That's why today I'm gifting you my game sense. So I made a list for you of the top 20 mistakes every low rank makes. And by the way, if you don't have the patience for this video and you just want instant advice to rank up, update two of the eight coaches from our coaching partner are completely booked out. So if you're ranked plat, diamond, or champion, and you're looking for coaching, DM their Discord account with the keyword final six to see if you might qualify for coaching. I'll have their Discord first link below. That's keyword final six for coaching. Let's get into the mistakes. Mistake number 20, blaming your teammates. You see, for a while now, I've been trying to push to SSL. And a couple months ago, I kept telling myself that the reason I haven't got SSL is because I'm solo queuing. And if only I had good teammates, then I would rank up. Do you think Squishy has trouble getting to SSL? Do you think apparently Jack has issues getting back to top 100 after a season reset? No because the best players in Rocket League understand this. In order to consistently rank up in Rocket League, you need to be carrying your teammates every rank to prove to the rank system that you are way better. If you're actually a Grand Champ player and you're stuck in Diamond right now, then you should have no problem solo carrying your games. Mistake number 19, bad settings. You need to understand that Rocket League today is completely different than Rocket League five years ago. So if you want to get to a high rank, you need to have settings that allow you to learn everything that the high ranks can do. Unfortunately, when Rocket League was made back in 2015, I don't think anybody could have expected mechanics to be the way they are today. So if you're stuck using the default controls, you're gonna play like a default control player. Mistake number 18, leaving your teammate alone. Chances are, if you're watching this right now in plat or diamond, you are not going to rank up if you trust your plat or diamond teammate to 1v2 without you. The lower rank you are, the more you need to babysit your solo queue teammate. I don't say this to make fun of anybody. I say this because this is literally how I ranked up when I speed ran unranked to grand champ in like five hours. So that means if your solo queue teammate is on offense, you are not on your side of the field picking up corner boost. I'm not saying to double commit, but I'm saying to position safe and cover for your low rank teammate, you're gonna thank yourself later. Mistake number 17, going for every center. We've all been in a situation where you're waiting for a center from your teammate and all of a sudden the ball is flying up above the opponent's net. The mistake a lot of low ranks make here is only checking the ball before they decide to go for it. What then happens is because you only looked at the ball, you don't see the defender flying up five seconds ahead of you, clearing the ball. And you end up over committing, landing on the opponent's backboard and usually conceding a goal. Instead, whenever Whenever you're on offense, I only want you to commit for a center if you're 100% confident you can beat the opponent to the ball. Mistake number 16, defending from the front post. You probably have heard that the back post or the post opposite ball side is the best post to defend from. You have more space in front of you to clear the ball and you don't have to save anything awkward behind your car. However, the problem I see a lot of low rank players make, if the play is moving too slow in their corner, low ranks have a tendency to creep up to their front post over time. I want you to build the habit of rotating back post and sticking there until your opponent brings you the ball. Mistake number 15, flying anywhere you can drive. This means if a ball is midair in front of your opponent's net and you're at half field, you should not take off 
from half field. The most boost efficient and fastest play is to cover as much distance on the ground and wait till the last possible second to take off. This is gonna make you faster, it's going to preserve boost, and it's gonna save you from over committing, which as you know, is a massive problem for lower ranks. Mistake number 14, double jump aerialing instead of fast aerialing. You need to understand there's a difference between double jump aerialing and actually fast aerialing. The correct order is not jump, jump, boost. It's technically tilt, jump, tilt. Just remember, double jump aerialing is not the same as fast aerialing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly recommend you check out the step-by-step -step tutorial I dropped two weeks ago on the best method to fast aerial consistently. Mistake number 13, straight line rotations. Because we have this thing in Rocket League called boost pads, I know they're a foreign concept to some of us at the lower ranks, straight line rotations are usually slow. Instead, you want to get in the habit of moving up and down the field in long arcs around the boost pads. Not only is this going to be more boost efficient, but generally the flow of rotation in Rocket League follows more of a circle than it does straight lines. Mistake number 12, rushing your corner. Corners. The corners and the backboard might be the most difficult part of the field to learn how to read for new Rocket League players. However, the thing you have to understand about corners is that corners eat time. So what that means is most of the time the ball goes into the corner, you're going to have a few seconds before it reaches any part of the field that might actually become a shot on net. Don't push up into the corner. Don't get sucked in to the black hole that is corners at the low ranks. And if you can just wait back and allow your opponents and your teammate to do whatever low ranks do in the corner, what you'll find is 95% of the time, there was no threat to begin with. Mistake number 11, air rolling the wrong way. A lot of new rank players hear that the pros air roll and they take it as a sign that they need to do 360s or roll their car upside down to get power on their shots. Just remember, like Lightning McQueen, if you want to shoot left, you air roll right. And if you want to shoot right, you air roll left. I'll drop the training pack I use to first learn air roll shots. It's called Air Roll Shots by Yiza, I think. And if you put just 20 or 30 minutes in a day, you'll have basic air roll shots down in less than a week of practice. Mistake number 11, hitting the ball with the roof instead of the nose of your car. You probably realized that the best way to get power is to time your dodge and to hit the ball with the front of your car. When I see low rank players, they stop using the front of their car and resort to just using the roof or the sides when they go for shots. I think this is because sometimes it feels easier to hit the ball with the roof of your car. But the thing you have to understand is when you hit the ball with your roof, you have way less control and way less power than when you connect with the nose or ideally corners of your car. Mistake number 10, solo queuing. The periods where I ranked up the fastest were always the periods where I was playing with teammates. Not only does solo queue suck because you have no comms and you're playing with a complete random every time, I feel like something people don't talk about is how helpful it is to surround yourself with players that are better than you. Not only that, but you're gonna improve way more over the long term when you're having fun. And unless you're a crazy person, I have yet to meet somebody that finds solo queue fun. And on that note, if you are new or you're struggling to find teammates, I actually run Rocket League's largest improvement discord. And I think we might have the most active looking for group system of any Rocket League server in North America. But if you're looking for teammates, click the first link down in the description below, and you're going to rank up twice as fast as everybody else at the low ranks. Mistake number nine, not using the backboard. So many low ranked players make the mistake on defense of pushing up into the center of their goal. The problem is you have no access to your backboard. And even for pro players, backboard reads are some of the hardest touches to make in Rocket League. So to save yourself some embarrassing defensive whiffs, listen to me here and position on your backboard instead of in the center of your net on defense. And trust me, it is so much easier to read the ball from up above looking down than it is from down looking up. Number eight, quick chatting your own teammates. I don't know what's happened with Rocket League ranked in the past year or two, but for some reason, whenever I turn quick chat on these days, it's not the opponents that are trash talking me, but my own teammates that are telling me to 
take the shot after I whiff on offense. So I know you watching are not the type to quick chat your teammate, but for the someone out there who does this, stop it. Mistake number seven, not boosting through contact. A lot of plats and diamonds that I coach do this weird thing with their aerials. Basically, they'll take off really early for the aerial, but they'll float in the air instead of boosting through their shot. While hovering or feathering your boost might be good on like an air dribble or a flip reset, when you're going for an actual aerial shot, all it does is slow you down, waste boost, and keep you stuck in the air longer. Once you're committed, you need to continue to commit. Mistake number six, jumping for everything. Common situations where the ball's in the air, but you don't need to jump include when the ball's getting centered to you on offense, but it's a bad center. When the ball is floating at the midfield and nobody's going for it. Or when the ball is floating in your corner, but there's no threat. Sometimes the best play in Rocket League is to just be patient and let the opponent take the bad touch rather than you. Mistake number five, dribbling in straight lines. When you dribble up and down the field in a straight line, the ball has this tendency tendency of blocking your field of view. And if your opponent is shadow defending properly, they're going to completely disappear behind the silhouette of the ball, which makes it impossible to tell when you're getting early challenged and usually results in you getting dunked. All you have to do is dribble on a 15 to 30 degree angle while you're moving up the field. This is going to angle your camera to the side and allow you to peek behind the ball to see when a challenger is coming. Mistake number four, positioning like the pros. While learning from the pros is great, and I'm not gonna tell you to stop watching the pros, there's a concept you need to understand about pro positioning called radius of coverage. Basically, radius of coverage refers to the space around your car that you can cover at any given time. The faster you're going, generally the farther in front of you you can cover and the less behind. And the slower you're going, the less in front of you you can cover, but the more of the field you can cover to your back and sides. So whereas a pro can cover half the field in front of him and behind him at any given time, if the ball gets hit over our friend Pedro the Platinum over here, he basically can't cover anything behind him. Now I'm not saying you are Pedro over here, but what I am saying is that the pros can get away with positioning way closer and more aggressive than you can. So remember, great to watch the pros, but the lower rank you are, the more safe you're going to want to position and the more time you want to give yourself to get the best results in your ranked games. Mistake number three, skipping warmups. Do you ever have those days, for whatever reason, it just feels like everything is off? If you're not playing Rocket League for four hours a day, how can you expect to get on after a week and have the exact same mechanics you did last week? So instead of slamming my head into the ranked wall, on days where I'm feeling off, I spend an extra 10 minutes doing a shooting training pack or free play until I feel better. And on days where I don't feel good, I just don't even queue ranked. Mistake number two, avoiding 1v1. There's a reason pro players say 1v1 is the fastest way to improve. Now I get it, 1v1 isn't the most fun. But what I will say is if you can play 1v1, not for the rank, but just for the improvement, you're gonna rank up so much faster. 1v1 is also going to highlight your weak points that especially if you're a twos or threes main, you would otherwise never see. Try to play 1v1 every couple times you play Rocket League, and you're gonna see an instant improvement, not just in your mechanics, but actually in your 2v2 and 3v3 play as well. Finally, mistake number one, the worst of them all is bad kickoffs. Almost everything in Rocket League is situational, except for kickoffs. Because unlike all the fancy mechanics, kickoffs are guaranteed to happen every single match. I'm not saying you need to learn how to speed flip kickoff to win in gold, but what I am saying is if you can simply learn how to get a consistent front flip kickoff, you're going to get one or two free goals every single game in ranked up until you get to diamond or champ. There are a lot of ways to rank up in Rocket League, and this is just some of the stuff that if I had back when I was starting, I would have ranked up a lot faster. Keep it wholesome. Remember, it's just a game, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.